order of the December 7th, 2021 Home Advisory Group to order. Roll call, please. Consuelo Aguilas? Here. Don Bastian? Here. Ruth Broder? Amy Chavez? Here. Lori Chancy? Here. Michael Crandall? Here. Paula Garcia? William Hennef? Here. Lynn LaPlante? Here. Donald Pachowski? Julie Renahan? Here. Scott Viger? Here. James A. Great. So some are in the other meeting. Um, do we have any public comments today? No public comments. Okay, wonderful. Um, I will entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the Home Advisory Group regular meeting from Tuesday, November 2nd, 2021. First. Thank you. Do I have a second? second? Wonderful. Um, roll call, please. Okay, William Hennep? Yes. Amy Chavez? Uh, aye. Uh, Consuela Aguilas? Aye. Don Bastian? Yes. Lori Chassie? Aye. Michael Crandall? Aye. Lynn LaPlante? Aye. Julie Renahan? Aye. Chad Biger? Aye. Aye. Okay, that motion passes. So um, I will entertain a motion to combine items 5A, B, and D. So second. Wonderful. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that motion passes. Um, I will entertain a motion to approve action item recommendation for approval of a third modification, second time extension of a Home Investment Partnership Act uh, between DuPage County and Catholic Charities, project number HM19-03A, tenant-based rental assistance program, extending the project completion date through March 31st, 2022. And B, uh, recommendation for approval of a third modification, second time extension of a Home Investment Partnerships Act funds program between DuPage County and DuPage PADS, Project number HM19-03B, Tenant-Based Rental Assistance Program, extending the project completion date through March 31st, 2022. Item number C, recommendation for approval of a conditional commitment of Home Investment Partnerships Act between DuPage County and Catholic Charities, project number HM20-04A, Tenant-Based Rental Assistance Program, in the amount of $207,723. Um, and item D, recommendation for approval of a conditional commitment of Home Investment Partnerships Act funds between DuPage County and DuPage PADS, project number HM20-04B, tenant-based rental assistance program, an amount of $200,000. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, do I have a second? Thank you. Are there any questions or comments on these items? I'll just give a quick step uh, piece on this. So. This is part of the patchwork of rent assistance that the county provides. It's tenant-based rent assistance. The important thing for us is it's funded through home. It's a good way to use home dollars. Um, you'll note that there's the extension of the two older agreements and then creating the new agreements at the same time. That gives us no overlap so that if someone's getting rent assistance, we can make sure they're not going a month without assistance. That way it, it, it overlaps. Um, I would note for the minutes, March, that 5A and 5B were uh, approved by HHS this morning, contingent on approval here. Uh, the other two will go through the normal process and we'll go to HHS in January. Um, but uh, tenant-based rental assistance, like I said, it goes through coordinated entry, so it's part of the overall rent assistance programming that the county provides. Uh, the advantage for us is that it's a good way to spend home money, which is always a challenge. So in that sense, we're interested in keeping these agreements going and um, starting new agreements. And TBRA uh, provides tenant-based rental assistance for up to 24 months, I think. Yeah. Um, so it's, uh, these agencies are typically working with um, households that need some long-term assistance. They also have a requirement that they have a, that they're sort of working case management plan, um, uh, trying to achieve either um, economic self-sufficiency or um, uh, getting access to some sort of permanent support in the hospital. Thank you for those explanations. Any questions on any of that? No? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that motion passes. Um, any other business that we have? I don't have, see any. Okay. I have one thing I was oh, gonna okay. note, sorry. Go um, for it. <laughs> we didn't talk about this before, but uh, so just uh, staff completed home monitoring this month. So just as uh, I wanted to give them accommodation for accomplishing that, that's a really long process. And then I wanted for the for the board to understand that they currently in our portfolio we have 782 units of affordable housing that are monitored. So there's a formula on how many actually get in-person visits and how many actually get on-site reviews and how many are kind of done as a desk review. But I wanted the, the board to be aware of that's the scope of what our current home program is. So that's 782 units of affordable housing currently. Uh, the true number is probably probably higher than that because we have some that are 
have, have met their affordability period, but are still in a continued use period, meaning we still have some money in the project, um, but they're not as stringent in terms of the regulations. So, but just to give you an idea of scope and what we're currently doing on affordable housing, I wanted to mention. So, yeah, thank you. That's really important for us to understand that scope. And, and that monitoring, I'm sorry, I keep piggybacking on him, but that monitoring, um, uh, there's two components to it. There's actual physical, physical inspection of the units, then there's actual uh, uh, inspection of the, the client files. So in order to be, uh, uh, to occupy a home assisted unit, um, the household has to meet certain income thresholds. Um, obviously it can't exceed a certain income threshold. Not only that, the, the lease has to be reviewed by staff to make sure that um, there are there's various addendums that have to be included on a lease for a home assisted unit. So it's a significant amount of work. And um, uh, because our por portfolio is so large, it really is, uh, uh, it's quite the yeoman's task to, mm -hmm. to undertake. And um, over the last couple of years, our staff has done a tremendous job of educating the property owners so that when they go out to monitor, the files have been um, in much, much better shape. Um, so we've been pleased with where we've been able to bring that portfolio up. Thank you so much. That's wonderful. So it's constantly, uh, we can never say it too much to express our appreciation and gratitude to the staff. So thank you for that. Reminder. There's a lot of them right there. Yes, it's thank you. Longer. Thank you. <laughs> wonderful work. Yay. <laughs> I appreciate that so much. Um, okay, with no other further business, then I move to adjourn today's meeting. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that motion passes. Our next meeting date is January 4th, 2022. And now, I, this joke is never gonna get old. So good to see you all, welcome. <laughs> I would like to call to order the meeting of December 7th, 2021, the CDC Executive Committee meeting to order. Um, roll call, please. Consuelo Lapuelas? Here. Glenn Bashkin? Here. Amy Chavez? Here. Lori Chassie? Here. Michael Crandall? Here. Paula Garcia? William Hennett? Here. Lynn LaPlan? Here. Donald Pachowski? Julie Renahan? Here. Scott Bagger? Here. James Hennett? Okay, thank you very much. Any public comment today? Mm -hmm. No public comment. Okay. I will entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the CDC Executive Committee, our regular meeting from Tuesday, November 2nd, 2021. I'll make that motion. Thank you. And would you like to second? second? Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, roll call, please. Okay. Consuelo Guelas? Yes. Michael Crandall? Yes. Don Bastian? Yes. Amy Chavez? Yes. Lori Chassie? Aye. William Hennep? Yes. Lynn LaPlante? Aye. Julie Renahan? Aye. Scott Aye. Great, that motion passes. Um, I will entertain a motion to approve action item A, recommendation for approval of a second modification to a community development block grant agreement with the village of Villa Park, project number CD19-26, Harvard Avenue Water Main Project, extending the project completion date through June 1st, 2022. Mm -hmm. Second. Wonderful, thank you. Um, questions or comments and discussion? So I would just note that we don't have a specific concern about this. Um, and then, so as we have federal dollars involved in our projects, we're required to pay certain labor rates. Our staff track that. Um, in this particular case, there was uh, um, an, there's an investigation ongoing into a labor rate that was paid for an individual with one contractor on one project. Um, we felt it was prudent to give additional time for the, the village to work through that process, but we don't have any specific concerns that I would bring up here. Uh, the project itself is, is 95% spent, the work is, is done. We're just leaving it open just so that this investigation can occur. If there is some kind of um, resulting action that's required from the investigation, I'll certainly share it with you. But at this point, we're just asking for an extension to give six months of additional time for them to work through that process. And then we've already been in communication with the village. Thank you, Dave. Does anyone have any questions about that? Okay. I just have a comment sure. to add. Um, this is a very unique situation. Uh, it doesn't happen very often. If any have happened in the past, this would typically be the first of its kind. So it's an unusual circumstance. So we understand and, uh, and are thankful for considering this request. Thank you for your comment. Um, okay, we've had a motion and a second. Um, all in favor? Um, all right. uh, any again? Okay, that motion passes. Action item B. 
I will entertain a motion to approve a recommendation for approval of a second modification to a community development block grant agreement with the village of Glendale Heights, project number CD 19 27, water main improvement phase one, extending the project completion date through January 21st, 2022. So moved. Thank you. Thank you. Dave, would you like to comment? Uh, yeah, I, I mentioned this to the chair in our one on one before, but we're not, this is basically a paperwork extension. We're not ever thrilled about paperwork extensions because we work hard with our partners to try to make sure that things get done on time and, and that everything can get closed out. Um, so the, the compromise on this one was that uh, we would have an extension, but still have the project completed before our timeliness test. So we, we gave them a, a little bit of extra time just to get final paperwork in and get the final, it's only 5% that needs to be paid out. Um, but we, we'll still have the money drawn and the, the money taken out of the system before that, that HUD test comes in. So, um, but it, it happens and we're not, you know, we know that um, the villages are also managing multiple priorities, right? So we get that it, it, it happens now and again, but um, so, so the request is for an additional six weeks of time to get everything done. Right. Does anyone have any questions or comments about that? No, okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion passes. I entertain a motion to approve action item C, recommendation for approval of a fourth modification to a community development black grant agreement with Little City Foundation, renovation of two Hanover Park CILAs, project number CD20-03, reducing the scope of work to allow for project completion. So moved. Thank you. Second. Thank you very much. Dave, would you like to comment? Sure, this is, you have heard many things in the news, I'm sure, about supply chain issues. This is an example of one where uh, two of the generators that were supposed to be part of this project are not going to be available till too long for us to wait in a short mm -hmm. version of things. So you'll notice too, though, that there's no dollar change with this. They're working through a change order that will think will be approved that will kind of make it budget neutral. So we're not taking money away from that. We think they'll still be able to get um, kind of their full allocation, full amount. Um, but there just wasn't a good justification to keep it open for these two generators. So we just decided to take them out of the scope. Yep, understood. Does anyone have any questions on that? No, okay, seeing none, um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion passes. And um, we move to CDBG projects update and Dave is going to give us an update. I do have a hand and I was thinking of this. Maybe I'll just do a PowerPoint next time. But I, this is the red light, green light, yellow light um, update that we've talked about. Um, I would highlight, I'm not, it's, it's becoming a little less readable. So I guess that's why I was thinking maybe next time we'll do it as a, as a PowerPoint. But I did want to share it and I wanted to highlight a couple of things. Um, and I suppose I, I buried the lead. Let me start with the, uh, the good news, which is. Right now, my expectation is that we will meet the timeliness test as of January 31. That, that's very good news. Um, and one of the reasons is if you look at this project list, and we talked about one of the challenges is that HUD doesn't give you the money until, say, August or September, and then you're expected to turn it around right away, and you test on that in January. So one of the things that helped us a ton was that CD2105, which is a 21 project, an acquisition project for UCP Segwin, they were able to get that acquisition done and paid for and the money drawn all before, you know, I think it was end of October or November. That helped us out a lot because that was 21 money that was being spent. Um, the other three projects that I was going to highlight are these on the first page, these 1925, 1926, and 1927. This has been sort of a, a hole that we've been working with for a little while. We had a huge rush of program income come in right before I started. And three of these, these projects were really supposed to be 2020 projects. They kind of got pushed into 2019 and so worked on a different timeline. We're very close. If you look at the amount remaining on those, we're very close to getting those three projects done. That'll be a big help for us too, in terms of just um, getting on track. And so we have, um, we'll also be reprogramming a lot of old money in the new, uh, the new action plan. So that will help us too. We're just trying to get ourselves. So, so very confident that we'll make it this year. Feeling very good about making it this year. We also want to position ourselves to make it every year, right? So to make sure that we're kind of making the changes we need to make to, to make this less of a, um, or more, so we can more confidently say that we'll be we'll be under that line earlier in the process. So um, I don't know that I have any other specific updates to to point out about the sheet. Um, we are still having a couple projects that um, are not going that well, but um, overall, again, that's very good news that we are going to meet that timeliness test and not risk surrendering any money back to the feds. So yeah, absolutely. Um, and thank you very much for putting this together. 
This is a great overview to, to provide us, uh, you know, so everyone understands the scope of work that we're dealing with and that they're all managing as well. And um, again, I would like to say thank you to uh, Member Chavez who's asked for this. And this is a, because it's a terrific idea. And I, I think these kind of high level overviews are so super helpful. So thank you very much for that. Um, anyone want to have specific questions about what you're seeing here? So the only question, you know, I have course, is please. just um, this, these, the ones in red, the $400,000 ones, those just need to be missed because of the construction season as we head into winter. Yeah. But we're confident that in the, will these fall under the guidelines then for 2022 funding or? So they'll stay as 21 projects. Okay. They'll be able to start, you know, they basically missed the construction season. So in January, even they'll start working on bid packets and they'll start getting things together. So they, they should be in good shape to have everything done in the next summer. Okay. Um, just in terms of, what uh, I was looking at this line mostly as will we be able to achieve this by timeliness test? So, right. so that's where, because mostly because of HUD and the late timeline when, when they gave the money to us, those projects all just got pushed to next year. Yeah. So, okay. generally, I mean, a lot of times the projects work a year behind. So, the 20 projects are done in 21, yeah. the 19 projects are done in 20. The example I gave of UCP Segwin is great because it was a 21 project and all the money got spent in 21, and that just kind of helps us out. So, okay. Um, but we would always love to do the, you know, if I gave us our money in May, we would be able to hit the construction season and we'd be able to get a lot of that work done. Yeah, that's so true. Bad timing. Yeah. Something we need to work on, I think, is getting that coordination a little better. So, right. Sometimes it has to do with when they're approving the budget and, you know, mm -hmm. the, right. the conversations in DC to go up. It's a continuing resolution. If it's a, so that gets tied into all that. Yeah. Get it right before the season started, but wishful thinking. <laughs> In a perfect world, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's directly tied. If if the federal government ever passed a budget on October 1st, like this, mm. um, that's exactly what it's tied to. So the longer the budget gets, so what happens is once the budget is finally passed and these continu continuing resolutions don't count, it has to be the, you know, the appropriate, the, the annual appropriation. So, HUD can't start their work until that's done. And you know, the, the past couple of years, that's been February or March. Once they know the exact dollar amount, then they can start the calculations of, there's thousands of CDBG um, recipient uh, communities. And they and some years, some drop out, some year and, and others are added. And so they can't start that calculation of exactly what your appropriation is until the federal budget is passed. So that's what pushes it so, so much farther out. So. You know, these continuing resolutions that have just become routine, unfortunately, at the federal level, really, you know, they really delay things. But the really frustrating thing is if they would just move the timeliness date to reflect when we actually got the money. That's the, yeah, I think, um, you know, that's something that I think it literally would take an act of Congress because yeah. I believe it's, it's statutory um, of when that measure is done. But if they, if, if that could be modified, then we, you know, it, it wouldn't be as much of an issue. Right, right. That seems logical, doesn't it? It does. Uh, I wish you could be in charge of that. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? <laughs> <laughs> See, look how effective we are. Um, well, thank you very much for putting this together, Dave. And I, I agree. I think I would love to see this in a PowerPoint at some point where we can go through it a little bit even deeper um, because this is, this is just super helpful. Um, okay, so if there's no further questions on what we have here, and we have no other business that I'm aware of. Oh, sorry. sorry. Here we're, we're go. <laughs> um, so one, uh, Mr. Crandall, Mr. Hennem, and myself had a conversation about the SFR program earlier, just to keep it on, especially the municipalities radar. We talked about what that might look like for municipalities and how we would refer. Um, so we'll just kind of keep everyone in the loop on that. We're not, it's not open yet per se, but just wanted to touch base on that. Uh, next meeting will be the recommendations for the neighborhood improvement grants that everyone applied for in the fall. So that will be just to have on your inner, that'll be next meeting. And then um, Mary made me think of this just now, but the Build Back Better legislation that's going, there is there is some additional funds in there for CDBG and homes. So if that were to go through and get all the way approved, it's potential that we'd have more, more money coming through us. So just something Wonderful. to have on the radar. Okay, so. that's terrific. Thank you for that. Um, okay, then. If there's nothing else, then I would like to, first of all, again, thank you all for your patience as we just had to work with some scheduling snafus and wish everyone here an extremely happy holiday. With good health for you, all of you and your families. And we will be seeing you January 4th, 2022 at our next meeting.
Um, so see you next year. I always love when I get to say that too. Um, can I please call for an adjournment? Do you have a motion? Um, second. A second. Wonderful. Roll call, please. No roll call. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yay. Thank you, everyone. Um, so what about the without a thing? Yeah. <laughs> That's another thing. Yeah. I know you one just got done. Yeah.